Hi, I thought I'd make some videos about um, whelping because when I uh, first had my litter of puppies, there was very little advice available. There's quite a lot on the internet, but you don't know how accurate that is. There's one book called Book of the Bitch, which is a really reliable book. Um, also, my vet uh, used to breed uh, spaniels and he knew a lot about breeding. And also my daughter is a vet. But I think the first time you have puppies, and even once you've had a few litters, there's a huge amount to learn. And if you can find somebody with experience to help you, um, give you advice, mentor you, just somebody to ask questions to. It's a lot easier to ask an experienced breeder a question rather than to just go on the internet because you don't know how reliable the information is. Um, there's all sorts of things out on the internet. So I thought I'd make these videos. I've been breeding golden retrievers for five, six years. And um, so I thought I'd just, I'll share my advice with you because um, then the knowledge is out there. Okay, dates are important. People have this idea that puppies are always born. Um, well, the, the gestation is 63 days, okay? You have to get away from that idea. It's not 63 days at all. It depends on your breed and you need to work out the due date for your breed. So because I have golden retrievers, they have large litters. And so the puppies could be born a week earlier because they basically, they just run out of room. If you have a small litter, like if you had a chihuahua with two puppies or something, maybe they would go to 63 days. I don't know. But for my breed, I go on the due date of 57 days, so that is from the mating, although even then when you've got your mating date, your dog might have been mated early and the eggs were only fertilised two days later or something, so there's still some leeway with that. But basically from day 50 you have to be ready and you have to stay at home, monitor your bitch and have everything prepared. So the main thing to consider when you're caring for your pregnant bitch is you can't use advocate, right? You can't use most um, flea treatments, okay? You can only use frontline, you can like a spot on treatment that you'd spray onto your dog's belly. That's all you can use. You can use something which actually works quite well is a knit comb. So you get your child's knit comb and actually comb, especially on their belly, that's where they get the fleas. Um, so flea treatment can be a problem. I don't think frontline works very well. I, I find the only thing that works well is advocate. Um, we've also had a lot of ticks this summer because it's been wet weather. I mean, that's another problem as well. But you really need to keep your um, bitch without fleas for the whole of their pregnancy. You need to work out way, even if you are manually removing them. Um, and then she can't have flea tr treatment proper flea treatment like advocate until she has stopped feeding the puppies. So from four weeks, she might still be feeding them um, occasionally, right? While you're trying to wean them. It might take you two weeks to wean them. So in that time, you still can't give her advocate. You've got to wait till they're really properly on solids, like when they're six weeks old, before you give her advocate. Right, there's something about pregnancy which stimulates the worms in the bitch, something to do with I don't know, hormones or the biology of it, something like that. So you have to worm your bitch from day 40 every single day, right? So you basically do this with um, panicure. So today I've got some leftover cauliflower cheese for Lola. She loves cheese, she loves pasta. And um, I'm mixing her panicure into that. So from day 40, she has three quarters of a sachet every, um, every day, mixed in with her food. So it's granules, 22%. I do have the liquid, I use the liquid when I get the puppies, uh, when the first time they weren't, but because I want to be accurate. Um, and I've bought a whole, bought these in bulk, so I just mix them in. Today's panicure snack. Lola's going to have some cottage cheese uh, mixed with puppy food. 
Um, so Lola's now on puppy food because it's got more protein in it. So it's puppy complete food made by the Jets, which is this packet here. Superfood finest puppy complete. And that's um so I'm mixing three quarters of a packet of this puppy food with a little bit of cottage cheese and that's just her mid-morning snack while I take the other dogs for a walk. Hi, right, so here I am in the kitchen. Um, I'm still stockpiling stuff, preparing for the birth. I've got um, lots of first aid in stock. I've got all the wormers. I've got the wormers for the puppies. I'm prepared like three months in advance for everything. Um, and then, one of the most important ingredients, lamb lack. Okay, so this is what you give baby lambs if their mums can't feed them. Well, I give it to uh, the mum as soon as she's had the puppies because there's a huge uptake of calcium. And then I also give it to the puppies as well um, when I'm trying to wean them off the mother's milk. And you can buy loads of different um, calcium supplements and you can buy, um, oh, weaning milks, milk for puppies to feed them with bottles, all this sort of thing. But I just use one thing and that's lamb lac. And you get a huge bag like this. This is, I don't know, it's a very big sack. Five kilos. Okay, there it is. Ugh. Five kilo sack, and I'll probably go through two of those. Um, but it gives the puppies a good start in life. And also, the mum needs to drink more because she's got to make milk for all those puppies. She's got to have loads of calories and loads of extra fluids. So, it's a really good food to buy. So, there are two types of panicure. There's panicure 10%, which is a liquid form, which I use. I syringe it into the puppies' mouths. Um, when they're three weeks old, I start worming them. So, but it's cheaper to use the granular form. So when you're doing it to the pregnant bitch, you use Panacure 22%, which is little packets of granules like this. Um, and then the cheapest dose is four, or 4.5 grams, little packets. The packets come in different sizes. There's three different sizes. So, um, there's a 1.8 gram, a 1, and a 4.3 gram. So basically, you have to work out the weight of your dog. So I give three quarters of a packet of the 4.3 gram packet. I suppose it sounds a bit weird. But it's basically, they think a large dog weighs 40 kilos, right? Whereas golden retrievers are large dogs, but they're not that heavy. So I'm going on a 30 kilo weight. So it's three quarters of the packet um, of panicure granules, okay? And if and don't, I go on their weight before pregnancy, even though they might put on four kilos. It's better to underdose than overdose, basically. Okay, so you're going to worm the mum from day 40 until two days after whelping, okay? Then you're also going to worm the mum every time you worm the puppies. Okay, so you worm the whole family all at the same time. Okay, food. People think, oh, food's a big issue. You've got to give them special food, all the rest. You really don't, okay? You don't need any special additives. You must not give your dog calcium, okay? If you give your dog calcium, you will get puppies which are too big and they won't be able to fit out, okay? So you've got to make sure that the puppies are not excessively large that they won't fit out of the bitch okay so to feed an absolutely normal diet um my dogs tend to get a bit fatty and they don't like regular meals um they don't like their regular dog food um also you can give smaller meals because their tummy will be smaller so i tend my dogs really like eggs right and then they also like pasta so you can do scrambled eggs or do like a little handful of pasta. So you can give more like treat meals, especially in the last week, right? But don't give um, calcium or any extra vitamins, any water, multivitamins, whatever you might take if for humans who are pregnant. And then once your dog has had the puppies, you need to give lots and lots of calcium to avoid eclampsia. 
especially if your dog is still is shaking or still digging after the birth um, so then I do actually have calcium pills calcium and vitamin D pills and I will put them into a peanut butter sandwich and I'll give her a peanut butter sandwich twice a day so she's like a huge dose of calcium um, for like two two days after the birth and then I'll give her lamb lac which is um, the special milk powder which you give to newborn lambs I'll give her four bowls of that milk you can also give goat's milk but I just use powdered milk because it's easier I'll give her and I'll get, make it warm as well because she needs to drink a lot more than usual so you can give your bitch puppy food from day 40 of the pregnancy because puppy food has more protein in it than ordinary well, this is if you're feeding a, a dry kibble which is a complete food right um there are also other things uh you need to do from day 30 you would see if your dog wants more food okay so wait until she's definitely in pup right and you can see her belly growing and then the last after day 30 she will grow very very rapidly and the puppies are growing very rapidly so then see if she wants more food so gradually go to four meals a day then a bit more you might make them smaller meals so by the time she has the puppies the time of whelping she will have um twice as much food as normal and by two weeks after whelping she will have three times as much food as normal okay so it's really really important especially when she's got to feed those puppies that she has as much food and drink as she wants okay like unlimited food and her favorite foods that's really important okay so your list when you're preparing for whelping um, you need to prepare for a worst case scenario so you need to have preferably two adults ready to help you or possibly one teenager you can leave at home and another person you need two people to go in the car so one of you would be the driver the other one is going to look after the dogs so you could have a puppy en route to the vet it could be three in the morning going to the vet in an emergency so you need two people there you also might have left some puppies at home and you need someone to keep an eye on those puppies so in an emergency you could actually leave the puppies home alone put them on a heated blanket make sure the other dogs can't get into the room and go but you really need somebody to help you in the car you also need to have a a box and blankets in case you go to the vet so you need to have your car ready outside with petrol all that sort of thing ready to go um you also need to have a read through of all the things that can go wrong remind yourself how you resuscitate puppies what you need to do in the worst case scenario um you need to have a bottle feeding kit and their first milk available in case you have a puppy that needs to be bottle fed you need to be prepared for all the scenarios that might happen. So, Lola, are you having a rest? Lola's having puppies. She needs lots of rest. This is what she needs. As you can see from her tummy, we just can't shave her tummy soon. She's got too much hair. Oops, Lola. There's too much hair around there. You're gonna have to shave those with them. Um, we we'll use scissors and then electric trimmers. But um, she's just feeling a bit tired. She needs to lie down a lot and she needs to be kept cool. She can't get too warm at all. This is here helping to build the dog's bed. Tarpaulin down first. 
Then there's a giant cage. Then there's the welding pen on top. Then there's the sofa. And plus the TV. So much TV while it's all going on. So there's the dog bed. It's about, hmm, I wonder how long. Six feet wide, eight feet long. It's got a large area. So this, there's, it's near electric socket for the electric bed and the light. And there's space for two people on the left. So I'm busy setting up the whelping pen and I thought I'd show you the electric blanket. In case you think I'm using a human one, a human one would get too hot. This one is like the lowest setting. Um, it's going to be 39 degrees. And yeah, it's because of um, it can get wet and it still works. But then you cover it with a fleecy blanket. Number two, there's another one as well. And then you cover your electric blankets with this little um, fleecy blanket here. So it's warm and it's cozy and doesn't matter if they work on it okay a general list of things which you need uh, before whelping you need scales to weigh the puppy you need i quite like to use felt tips you say there's a puppy that's born and it doesn't look quite right so it's a bit you have to like resuscitate it slightly or a little bit greenish when it comes out. I always mark one I'm a bit worried about straight away. But then only like 24 hours later will I weigh them all and label them up. So they need to have proper collars, but I use felt tips if I'm marking a puppy the first day. You just like felt tip on the top of the head. Um, you need lots of special snacks for mum. So you might need to buy three packs of eggs. You might need peanut butter, you might calcium pills. Um, lamb lack you need sensible things like a warm room um, even in summer sometimes your room can get chilled um, I have an electric heater on even if it's in summer I have the room set at like 24 degrees even if the mum's far too hot, hot I have to keep those puppies warm you might need to examine the mum there might be a chance that the puppy will get stuck, right? And you might need to put two fingers into the mum. So you will need rubber gloves and Vaseline or KY jelly. Um, and you have to be prepared in case the, the puppy stuck down there. You'd have to put your fingers in just to see if there is a... Well, basically, you're just looking for a blockage. See if there's something wrong. Or the first puppy might not present in the right way. Sometimes you get a puppy with a really big head. It's often the biggest puppy that starts the labour. Because labour is started by the fetuses. It's not started by the bitch. But sometimes you have a puppy, if they get stuck, and they have a shoulder up like that. So they're coming down the birth canal with the head and the shoulder. Sometimes they do come out feet first, but it's the first puppy. It's better if it's coming out head first because it's just um, an easier birth, especially for the first one. Okay, some people take the dog's temperatures because that's a really accurate way of telling when your bitch is going to give birth. Um, the temperature would drop. It's normally like 38, 39 degrees and it will drop to 37 degrees be a really really distinct drop and within 24 hours she will give birth um, some people use that if they still going to work and stuff like that they might. but um, I would be at home and I would notice because they she would get really really restless and agitated she'd be out digging in the garden I let my dogs dig when they um, having puppies because it's a natural thing to do but you do have to have a torch you have to go outside once she's in labor might go on for 12 hours might go on the whole night of her running around in this agitated state and every time she goes outside you have to follow her in the dark 
and check her poo, check exactly what she's doing in the bushes and everything. Because my friend's puppies, or my friend's dog, had puppies in the garden, right? She dug a hole, gave birth to the puppies in the garden, covered them with soil, and then came into the house and left the puppies outside. But my friend managed to resuscitate them. She ran outside and got them out of the hole and they were all fine. But you have to watch your dogs non-stop. They cannot go to the toilet on their own at all. Okay, and this this also counts for the 24 hours after birth as well. You've got to check their poos, see what their poos are like, or any, any other discharge comes out of them. Okay, so I use electric blankets. Um, I have two electric blankets, just in case one of them goes wrong. And those puppies will live on the electric blanket for a week because it keeps their body temperature at a certain level. It's a really good way of keeping them warm. I also have lamps in the room. I have a really bright light and I have a dim light. Um, I've got a huge bed set up with a whelping pen in my living room. So I can sleep on the sofa next to the whelping pen. And I've got TV to keep me company and I've got Wi-Fi. So I'm perfectly happy. So I'm able to sleep next to her for probably a couple of nights. And then after that, I'll have, um, well, I'll be just, I'll be sleeping above the living room. So I'll be able to hear if there's a problem. Right, you need to record the time that every puppy is born. So you need to record when she starts looking agitated, if there's any discharge, colour the discharges, but everything has to be written down in case you need to go to the vet. Also, it's really important is the time between births. So if she goes two hours between puppies, you need to go to the vet, okay, because there might still be puppies inside and she'll need an injection of oxytocin to get those puppies out. So it's really important. You can't just assume all the puppies will come out. Labour can go on for 12 hours. That's the second stage of labour, which is actively giving birth. That can go on for 12 hours and she'll be absolutely exhausted. And she'll be so busy looking after the puppy she's got that she thinks she's finished. She doesn't actually know this puppy's still left in her. And if your labour stops, it's up to you and your vet to get those last puppies out. So um, I don't weigh them at birth because I like the birth to be as natural as possible and I don't ha handle the puppies very much at all. I let the mum, sometimes I'll move the puppy round so the mum can see the puppy because she might be lying down and then she might not be aware or she might just have felt something. So I might move the puppy round to next to her so she can lick the puppy clean. I let her eat all the placentas because it's it's good for her, even though she does do like weird poos the next day. But uh, poos are like solid blood. But um, I try not to interfere too much. Um, if there's anything I'm concerned about, I'll just use a felt tip on their head. And I will let her clean up all the mess. What I'm doing is I'm keeping the bed dry and I'm keeping records and I'm monitoring the mum. Okay, so hopefully she'll be relaxed enough that she'll be able to look after those puppies. Um, so early on, once they're like 24 hours old, well, I'll weigh them all and check the sex and all that sort of thing. Otherwise, it's really not necessary. So, is that? So I shave their tummies, so um, it's easier for the puppies to reach the t uh, teats. Um, it's really, Mia. The puppies are born in a very immature state. They're blind, deaf. They can't walk, um, and you do need to help them a bit. Just get them latched on. Well, not really latched on, but just like shove their face into the teeth. Sometimes you would open their mouth and shove them on. Some some of them look more switched on than others. Um, but yeah, you also need to check your bitch's nipples. Actually, that's another thing you need to do. Check for signs of mastitis. Make sure all the nipples are functioning. Sometimes you get a nipple which doesn't work. And also the front, two front nipples are really useless. They have hardly any milk in them. So from day 50, 
you need to be prepared you need to have everything ready um, just in case puppies come early also you need to have lots and lots of blankets right so you make the bed so I've got a cage and then I've got a whelping pen inside it I'll show you there this is me this is Bobby this is Mia this is the whelping pen um, I've put down cardboard so I've put down to protect the floor I've put down um, a huge plastic sheet and then on top of that I've put cardboard and then on top of that I've got blankets and now I'm going to have towels as well so I will wash the blankets every day I don't like using newspapers because I don't think they're clean um, I'd rather use fleece blankets just wash them at high temperature and I wash everything with um, Milton just like you would with babies really I don't have my uh, dog scanned when they're pregnant. Some people do, but I did it once and they couldn't tell me the exact number. So if you want to have um, a fetal count, you have to go in the last week and you have to get an x-ray. So I don't know. It just seems like a lot of intervention. And it might be stressful for her because she'd have to go in the car. She might get too hot. She doesn't like going to the vet, that sort of thing. So then it means you don't really know when the labour's finished. Um, you don't really know if that's all the puppies you're getting. That's another problem. Okay, to take your dog's temperature, obviously you don't do it in the mouth. You do it rectally. You use a thermometer with Vaseline on. You do it twice a day, morning and night. just thought I should mention that because I just said taking a temperature. Okay, stage one. I think with my dog, stage one was actually longer in the first labour. Like with women, your stage one is longer in your first labour. But of course that's not... Remember, dogs have not read the books. They don't know what the rules are. Okay, so stage one is between 6 and 36 hours. But I usually count on 12 hours. I don't know why. I usually think they're like agitated from like lunchtime onwards. And then the puppies are born from maybe 10pm onwards. Puppies always seem to be born at night, basically. I've never heard of puppies born during the day. But it's also this cave thing because they like being in the dark. Okay, so in the first stage, they will probably stop eating. So that's a fairly good sign because not often a dog stops eating. Okay, they're really agitated, they're digging. They might, if you've got them on newspaper or paper, they will shred up the bed, they will get the bed ready, they will pace up and down, they will hardly sleep at all, right? but you won't see any contractions until stage two. Okay, stage two is when the puppies are born. Before they're born, hopefully, the bitch will go to the bed and pace around and you'll actually see contractions. If you look at the side of her tummy, not her belly, but the actual side, you will see the contractions happening and she might cry out with the pain as well because it's quite painful, stage two. Um, and then sometimes they standing up and they give birth and the puppy just like flops onto the floor. It's really hard to get, ideally you would think they would lie down to give birth. Um, also you meant to count the placentas. I find this really hard because the placentas come out like with the puppies. And if you have 10 puppies, it's really hard. And also we usually do it all in the dark because the dogs don't like bright lights. So we just have like a dim light in the room so because um, we're trying to do it naturally so it's quite hard to count up everything we just use like a bedside reading lamp so which is focused on her bottom really so we can see what's happening there and the rest of the time she can sit in the in sort of semi-darkness um so stage three is when the placenta comes out stage two and three are um mixed together they're not like completely separate stages because you'll get puppy with placenta right so you, the dog should eat the placenta sometimes they eat the placenta before they lick the puppy right if they're really greedy dogs um and the, the puppy's still in the amniotic sac and all they're doing is busy looking for extra food but right remember to write down the time the puppy's born can be hard you can have two puppies born in one go and then like an hour before the next one um in the ideal world 
they would you would only have like half an hour to an hour between each puppy or pair of puppies right so that would be a nice labor is if you had two puppies half an hour one puppy half an hour another puppy that would be good an emergency when your dog's giving birth is when um, you get any green or black um, fluid sometimes you get a puppy that's a little bit green and it's a bit it's often the last in the litter and it's a bit floppy it's just not active it's not moving that much um, and you, you notice the smell as well the greedy black stuff smells yucky um, so that is an emergency as soon as you see the green black discharge it means the placenta is no longer attached to the um, well to the puppy and and the puppy has been starved of oxygen so those puppies will need resuscitation if there are any other puppies left in the womb those puppies will die okay so that is an emergency when you would go to the vet immediately right so you would put the bitch in the car leave the puppies at home put the bitch in the car with your helper and then phone the vet while you're driving or your helper will phone the vet okay Okay, you need to um, look at the clock and check if there's any problems with the way the labour is just developing. If your bitch is having contractions for an hour and there's no puppy, right? That is an emergency situation because the puppy may be um, coming out feet first. It may be coming out with its head and shoulder. Okay, so... It could be the position of the puppy. That is one reason. It's called dis dissocia, dissocia, dystocia, right? Where the delivery stops. So she's trying to get the puppy out of her and the puppy is not in the right position. There's another one where the uterus, where's that one? Ah. Oh. Yeah, she could, she could have something wrong with her internally. Um, uh, there's another one, low calcium levels, which can stop your dog's label. So that's why it's really important to give them a huge amount of calcium as soon as the labor starts, okay? So once she has a puppy, she needs calcium as this stu stimulates uterine contractions, right? So you can get... Well, this, these are my daughter's notes. She's always telling me what to do. She's a vet. So you can get calcium glucosamate from your vet. I bought calcium carbonate on eBay. Um, another problem is low glucose levels, which is basically she's really exhausted. Okay. She probably hasn't slept for 24 hours. So you can put glucose into her water. But I think they don't really like that. I would rather give them a peanut butter sandwich. Okay. Also remember, dogs sometimes vomit when they're, when they're in labour. So just give her like really small amounts. Don't give her a huge meal. But you might want something really tasty like peanut butter. And you can hide a calcium pill. You can even give peanut butter on your finger and then hide a calcium pill inside. Right, this is quite a common problem. Oversized fetus, okay? Where you have a puppy that is too big. So this this is... In like, like in my breed, it would happen if I had a small litter. So I have heard of people having only three puppies with golden retrievers. I suppose this is why some people think you should have a fetal count. Because when you have your fetal count, you know roughly the number of puppies you're having. And then you would know that their size is okay. So the um, person I know who only had three golden retrievers, if they were full term, they would be a lot bigger than if you have 10 puppies. It's a bit like with sheep. If you have, if you, that's why you scan sheep so that if they're having twins, they get twice as much food as um, a sheep that's only having one lamb. So anyway, and then the positioning, male positioning, the fetus may come the wrong way. If it gets stuck, then you can try use your thumb and forefinger to manipulate it out. But you'll probably go to the vents. She, she, oh, this is quite a good tip. She's put syringe in the lube, which I didn't think of. But 
if you can get KY jelly in a syringe and syringe it in to the bitch's vulva, um, into the birth canal, that might just be what it needs if it's in the wrong position. Okay, so if labour is not happening, if these puppies are not arriving, okay, it's an emergency, okay, and it's no good phoning your vet because vets often don't really know a lot about birth, right? It's up to you to know all the medical emergencies before your dog um, goes, your bitch goes into labour, right? And know exactly when you go to the vet. And it probably will be three in the morning and it probably will be really expensive, but you still have to go. You have to have um, an x-ray to see if there's a puppy in the birth canal and then you have an injection of oxytocin. And all that might cost you three or four hundred pounds, but hey ho, you have to do it because it's a lot better than a dead puppy. Okay, sometimes you need to resuscitate a puppy, right? Do this if a puppy's born after a really long delay, or if a puppy's born um, a bit greeny black, or if the mum doesn't go immediately to open the, the sack of the puppy. Maybe it's been this two born at the same time and you don't see the second one, or she doesn't see the second one, okay? So to resuscitate a puppy, okay, you would open the sack. It comes in a sack, right? Um, I don't know, some people do stuff with scissors, some people cut their cords, some people do all that stuff. I would just use your fingernail, okay? So you open that sack so the puppy can breathe. It cannot breathe in that sack, right? It's come, it comes, it's this size, and it comes in a, like a really... A solid little bag actually so then uh, you clear the airway straight away you're clearing the mouth and the nose you even put your finger in the mouth right then you use a towel you rub it okay you can shake well you don't you don't shake the puppy but you would hold it upright and just like swing it slightly like that to clear the lungs okay so you've got to hold the puppy upside down so the lungs clear so you just hold it like that, swing it slowly, and then have a look again, try and get the nose and mouth clear, okay? You can um, rub the, top, the puppy quite rigorously on the back with a towel or kitchen towel. Um, you want fluid to come out of the nose, okay? Do not shake the puppy. Don't go like this, right? That will cause brain damage, same as with a baby, right? So don't shake, but you can do a swing. If you think of a swing, like a gentle swing, because upside down movement helps clear the lungs, okay? You can blow into the puppy's nostrils to stimulate breathing, you know, the kiss of life. Um, so to check if the puppy's breathing, put your finger in his mouth. If his mouth, like a... Right. If the mouth is warm, keep going. Right. Basically, if the puppy is warm, it's still alive, and you need to keep resuscitating it until it really, really wakes up. Okay. Shine a light into the puppy's mouth and look at the colour of its tongue. Okay. If its tongue is a pinky red colour, that is a really good sign. That's healthy. If it's a bit blue, Okay, if you get a puppy covered in the gunji green black stuff, the puppy will have a weird, it'll be a weird colour inside its mouth as well because it's been starved of oxygen. So if it has a bluish tinge to that tongue, it needs oxygen. So you're gonna have to do the kiss of life, get the lungs cleared, all the rest. Okay, and this you have to do yourself, right? If you wait, drive that puppy to the vet, even ten minutes, it'll be dead by then. Right? You need to be really, really quick thinking at this point, even though it's the middle of the night. Right? So, um, especially if you get one of these puppies that needs resuscitating, you have to keep them very warm. You might need a hot water bottle. You need the heat mat hot water. Um, because those puppies can't regulate their temperatures. Okay? If you're supplementing milk in the first 24 hours, right? Remember to get milk from the mum as well. The puppy still needs colostrum, okay? And the colostrum in dogs doesn't last long. I think it only lasts like two or four hours or something. You could be really quick with getting the colostrum into them. Um, so, 
Yeah, you have to get the colostrum in, right? You might need to cut the umbilical cords if you've got a bitch who's not interested in the puppies. But really, the mother the mother should do that. You don't treat the cords at all. You just leave them naturally. You wouldn't put iodine on something. Okay. Um, also, yes, this is really important. If you get a small puppy, the small puppies always go at the back. Okay. There's like an order to the mama's teats and the teats at the back have the best milk. The ones at the front have hardly any milk and the ones in the middle, okay, okay. So any puppy that's a bit small or they've had to resuscitate, remember to put it on a back teat. Okay, there's more problems that can go wrong after the puppies are born. There's some problems that can go wrong with the bitch as well. You still have to monitor her health really closely, okay. Remember, she might be dehydrated because she might not have drunk for 24 hours she won't have eaten for 24 hours she'll be exhausted because she hasn't slept um you need to take really good care of her get the liquids into her even if you're buying um goat's milk or lamb lac right you can't just give her water i think you've got to give her something a bit tastier than water get the fluids into her okay. other problems that can happen retained fetus right they can there can be a fetus that dies inside and it doesn't come out okay so this will lead to infection or even if they keep a bit of the um, placenta from the birth that can lead to infection and they'll have a hemorrhage okay so you need to check the discharge and blood loss three or four times a day okay just see what's coming out though she will bleed she'll have a discharge for a few days Right? And she probably won't have time to keep herself clean, so it will look a bit gungy. But you need to monitor how much blood she's losing. Um, sometimes you have to take them to the vet for oxytocin, just to get that uh, whatever's left in the uterus, just to get that out. So after the birth, it could even be three days after the birth, you just have to go to the vet for um, an injection. Um, another problem is uterine prolapse. Right, which is due to excessive straining. You have to go to the vet and the manually the vet will manually put it back in. Okay. Uterine rupture, right? In large litters. So that can happen with oxytocin. That's why they um always x-ray before they give oxytocin. Um eclampsia is actually very common. Okay, so um it's due to the demands of a large litter. You have to give calcium. Um, if, they're if they are panting, twitching, digging a lot, those are all signs. Um, if it's really severe, you'll need to go to the vet. But otherwise, just increase the amount of calcium you're giving your dog. Um, you can have problems with the milk, the failure of milk. Um, and you might need to supplement with um, puppy milk. You can get mastitis, which is an infection of the mammary glands. Um, you have you need antibiotics, so you need to go to the vet for that. Um, the vet might give you, you might not have to, sometimes you don't have to take the vet, take your dog to the vet. Sometimes you can just describe it on the phone and then send somebody to get the medication because you don't want or tell your vet to come to the car that's quite a good one you've got to be very careful you take your dog out because you don't want your dog to pick up an infection and bring it back to those puppies um and uh yeah even if you and also you don't want to distress your bitch by taking her out in the car she wants to stay at home with the puppies so it's a lot better if you phone your vet and say these are the symptoms um, and you will see that you a mastitis is actually very easy to spot um, and you just phone the vet describe it and then say can I just come and collect it because you know you're not going to ask for antibiotics unless you really need it are you um, so I'm still preparing for the birth I've got collars ready so these are little vel velcro collars um, really easy to put on and then when they get bigger, I use these cat collars because they pull the velcro collars off. I also have life drops, which I've never used. A herbal kickstart for the puppies. I have glucose, which uh, you mainly 
put in the mum's water, give her a bit of energy. I have lactol, which is puppy milk if you need to bottle feed. And I have my bottle feeding kit here. So I've got these size seeds, different bottles, um, I think bottle cleaners. These syringes are for, um, well, if you need to syringe anything, I will, I will worm the puppies. We'll sterilise these and then worm the puppies with a liquid panicure using a syringe. And um, I have frontline spray, which um, I'm using on Lola. So here's some other things you need. I've got scales to weigh the puppies. When I weigh them, I'll put them in this Tupperware, right, with a big kitchen towel at the bottom. Just put them in there, set it to zero. Should go back to zero. Then you put the puppy in, um, and that's how you weigh them, right? You need to weigh them every day and record their weights to make sure they're all, they need to double their birth weights within um, eight days. Um, and then also need a kitchen towel, so I can keep the place clean. And also need some bin bags for rubbish as well. So I think I'm all prepared now. What I'm doing today is cutting around Lola's tummy. You see there, there's her nipples. So she's due to have puppies in about four days. It's really hard for the puppies to find the, the milk. They're blind, deaf, and they can smell, but this just makes it a bit easier for the puppies. And the hair will grow back, and Lola really doesn't mind. Um, it'll also help keep her cool. Her tummy's very, very hot at the moment. So. So, Lola's quite happy. Got her big bone at butchers. There we go, how big's that bone, Lola? So, thanks for watching guys, um, subscribe and you can follow our journey as our puppies, um, hopefully they'll be born in the next week and uh, you can see how they grow. Bye.